Portals are always fun, and we've done portals a bunch, like back in 2014 when we did our portal combat short. But those are more traditional style portals where you see into where you're going. But in the new Loki series on Disney+, Plus, they have these really cool and unique looking portals. And in one shot specifically, the camera travels through the portal along with the characters, so we see the location change within the same shot. So obviously, we had to replicate this effect. And since the new Loki series came out yesterday, Josh, as usual, has been insufferable. You look like you're from the dollar store. Master of Magic! But to do the effect of walking through that portal, we shot two plates, one of Josh walking indoors and one walking outdoors, trying our best to match framing and pace. And in the show, these portals animate pretty quickly into the shot. But for our version, we opted for a more subtle way for the portal to appear since Josh is in the foreground blocking some of our view. To start, we're gonna drop the interior footage into a new comp in After Effects and go to the point in the timeline where you want the portal to begin appearing. Split the layer, then move forward and split again when we know our actor will have moved completely through the portal. Duplicate this layer and hide one of them for now. On the visible layer, we want to roto Josh, so we're going to be using Roto Brush. Double click the layer to open it in a new panel, and with the Roto Brush tool selected, draw within your actor to select them. You can refine any edges and hold down control to subtract any areas too. Roto Brush has a few settings we can adjust, but for now we will just boost the feathering to get a less nasty outline. Then just press play and Roto Brush will do its thing throughout the length of the clip. Scrub through to see how it did, and you can fix any errors if needed. Once you're happy with it, close the window and now we can see it in the main comp with an alpha background. You can also try changing the settings to see if they give you a better result. We also sometimes go in and manually roto and keyframe certain areas to remove as well. Since roto brush can be a bit slow, we will shorten the timeline selection to only this layer, then add to render queue and export with RGB plus alpha. Once that's done, we can hide this layer and unhide the second layer. We will use this one to track the footage since our camera is moving Moving through the scene, we're going to use a 3D camera track, but because Josh obscures parts of the background throughout, that can result in a bad or failed track. A possible way to get around this is by creating a solid and drawing a rough mask around your actor, then keyframing it to obscure them throughout the shot, giving us something like this. Select both layers and pre-compose, checking adjust comp duration to time span so that it remains the same length as these layers rather than the full length of the timeline. Now right click and track camera. Luckily for us, this has tracked pretty well and you can always try a detailed analysis too if needed to see if that will give you a better result. So select a point which remains fixed and present for a long time throughout the clip, right click and create null and camera. We can now hide the solid in the pre-comp and to add the portal, create a new solid and make it a 3D layer, then copy and paste the 3D nulls position to it. Change scale, position, and rotation to place it in the location you want, then scale it up larger than the doorway will be to allow enough of a border for the glow to roll off. Hide the layer and draw a mask for the edges of the portal, then make it visible again. For the glowing edges, we'll use Video Copilot's free Saber plugin. Set the layer to screen and change the core type to layer mask. In Loki, the portals have a warm color, so we'll change ours to match and tweak the glow and size settings. Then we're gonna enable motion blur and play through to make sure it feels like it's in the right location in our scene. A quick way to animate this appearing is keyframe the start offset at the point you want the appearance to be complete, then move back and increase the value to have the line draw on. Josh will be in front of the rest of this, so we'll start ours right here. To soften the sudden end of the line, we can also keyframe the start size to taper it, highlight these and keyframes and press F9 to easy ease them. 
To add a fogged glass sort of material, duplicate this border layer to be used as a matte and delete the saber effect, then duplicate again and move the border layer above these. We'll be using this free texture image from unsplash.com. Drop it into the comp below the matte layer, make it 3D and enable motion blur. Copy and paste the border position and rotation, then scale the texture to fit. Set the texture to alpha matte using the layer above, duplicate the camera and move it above these layers, then select all three and pre-compose to become the portal texture. Hide the visibility and create an adjustment layer for the blur, setting it to alpha matte using the other portal matte layer. Add a compound blur effect, select the texture, pre-compose as the blur layer, change to effects and mask and increase the blur amount. This uses the luminance of our texture to control which areas are more blurred than others, giving a realistic fog glass effect and it looks more interesting than just a clean blur. On the texture layer we can add a curve effect and change this to alter the look of our blur as well. To animate this to appear in our scene we can lower the curves effect to make it clearer initially. In the effects drop down we can keyframe the effect opacity over time so that it starts clearer and gets more fogged. We will also keyframe the adjustment layer blur amount and the layer opacity to have it gradually appear. The compound blur is creating these edges so to fix it use a motion tile effect before the blur with mirrored edges and increase height. Then uncheck compound blur stretch map to fit. In Loki, there's some chromatic aberration going on, so we will use Red Giant Universe's RGB separation plugin with increased radius and distortion and move up before the other effects. A curves effect with lowered blue and lifted red channels adds a subtle warm tone. As the camera gets closer, we will use a fast box blur effect keyframe to increase and another curves to get darker over time. Import and drop in the roto alpha we rendered to bring your actor back to the foreground. Duplicate and hide one for now. In Loki, when a character walks through these portals, it's like walking through a wall. And it's a similar technique as the Umbrella Academy teleport effect that we have a tutorial for as well. God of mischief! God. At the frame when your actor begins to walk through the portal wall, draw a mask beginning to remove part of them and set a keyframe. Go to the frame before and with the mask selected, if you double click the square mask, it will convert ours to fill the frame so that before this point, our mask won't need any extra animating. Go through and add keyframes to make it look like your actor is submerging through the portal until there is nothing left. Duplicate this layer and on the bottom version, add a fast box blur and increase the amount. Then a curves effects to brighten it up and add a warmer tone, giving us this border around them. Right now though, the border surrounds Josh fully even for parts not going through the portal yet. So create a new mask to subtract certain areas and keyframe it as they enter the portal, then trim this layer. In Loki, they also have this more diffused bright layer too. So we will duplicate this and increase the blur amount, then lower opacity slightly. To add more interest to the harsh mask, create a new adjustment layer above everything, trim to the same section of the timeline as the Josh borders. Use a vector blur effect with the vector map set to the Josh Roto footage and lower the amount. This creates some distortion using the footage of Josh and adding more interest to these edges. Though it does create these gaps again, so use the motion tile effect like last time to fix it. Draw a rough mask around the area and boost the feathering, then keyframe it to appear just like the borders. We can add some more subtle RGB separation again to further match Loki, and for anyone with this real smart motion Blur plugin, this is a good way to make the transition feel a bit less sudden. In Loki, it looks like there are some ghosting duplicates fading in and out, and we can do this by making that earlier Josh duplicate visible and adding some fast blur, lowering opacity, keyframing it to fade away, then back again and back to zero. And remember to trim the layer to just this moment in the timeline. Hello, brother. Why do you look like bargain bin Jesus? I sent you a text message. Okay. Look at it. No. Do you not trust me, brother? Oh, God of mischief! Is that yours?
That's weird. Now to transition to outdoors, drop in your second location clip. And with just this and the bottom footage soloed, we're gonna lower the exterior opacity and try and match up the timing with Josh's walk. Change scale and position two if needed. Luckily with the Loki ghosting duplicate effect, this doesn't need to be perfect as we'll be fading it on in the comp. When we have the right timing, we can unsolo and move this footage below the portal border. In Loki's version of the portal, the background appears pretty quickly using opacity, blur, and contrast. So we'll use a curves effect to darken our footage and add some warmth. Plus a fast box blur, another RGB separation effect, and keyframe each of these to go back to normal over time. Then keyframe the layer opacity to have it fade in. Duplicate the portal border, uncheck effects on the bottom version, and set the exterior layer below low to alpha mat. Push the portal border 3D position back in Z space to create a bit of a doorway and feather the mask a bit to soften. Now we're gonna duplicate again, making this one visible and checking effects back on, but decrease layer opacity a bit. To replicate some of these organic energy type effects, we're first gonna tweak these saber glow settings and increase glow distortion set to energy as well as noise speed and scale. We also changed flicker intensity and speed to get some variety, then keyframe glow intensity and layer opacity to start at zero, making it fade on. Add a radial fast blur and boost the amount, then a fast box blur and keyframe it to begin blurry and get clearer over time, which gives us this. For this ripple energy waves, we use several assets from our energy pack, tinted a similar warmer tone and using a fast box blur, then keyframing scale and opacity to have them expand and fade in and out. For some final touches, we used an adjustment layer above everything with some subtle turbulent displace. Turbulent displace. Place, place. Keyframing the size and amount to increase and decrease back to normal over time. Then another adjustment layer with some chromatic aberration and glow to finish it all off and then we are done. So that's it for today, how to walk your person from one location to another using visual effects. And if you have an effect or technique you would like to see us cover on the show, you can post that below in the pinned comment that we have down there where you can post nice. below. Yep, you're doing a you good just job. Just reply to it. Yep. If you're not subscribed, consider doing so and hit the bell so you're notified when we put up new content. And until next time, don't forget to write, shoot, edit, repeat. I smell barbecue. What? Am I having a stroke? You are fine, you're fine.